This is our new insanely powerful Hot Wheel launcher, and today we are trying to break the sound barrier. That's right, we want to send one of these Hot Wheels at over 767 miles per hour, which is faster than the speed of sound. At these speeds, it becomes incredibly dangerous, as you might expect, so don't try this at home. And we've actually made a test dummy to see what happens if you did walk in front of a supersonic Hot Wheel, which we'll get to later. Now, we have built a high-speed Hot Wheel launcher before, and it worked great, but that design was limited to a measly 355 miles per hour. I think this is partly because we used a relatively small pressure chamber, uh, and our new build is a massive upgrade with 13 times as much air capacity. This pressure chamber is a modified tire inflator and some adapters that are 3D printed to accept regular PVC pipe that is, of course, pressure rated. And this thing can move some serious air. It's both impressive and terrifying just how quickly it releases two and a half gallons of high pressure air. We had a lot of fun testing this thing at lower pressures just like in the original build except this time we didn't actually use foam as the barrel seal. We custom designed a bunch of these 3D printed shuttles and these fit really closely within the pipe. Actually I designed a bunch of different styles of shuttle so that we could run a few tests to see which performs the absolute best. One of them was a super simple and lightweight design and the other option had these foam rings that were designed to seal inside the barrel for perfect pressure retention and both of them had the option to add a check valve I'll explain that in a second the first round of testing was done without a hot wheel at all so I could eliminate variables and I found that the performance was best with the simplest design uh, this one had the least barrel friction but it was also the lightest by far so both of those things probably played a very major role I had expected the seal quality of the foam rings to make a really big difference, but it was just slower all the way around. And the impact of the check valves on either one was pretty negligible. It didn't change the speed much at all. Now you're probably rushing to the comments to talk about the terrible aerodynamics of my shuttle design, but that's actually very intentional for two reasons. The first is safety. I'm already shooting in a remote area, but I've calculated the velocity fall off as well as the drop to ensure this remains on my property in the event that I somehow miss a backstop. And if a small piece does happen to exit the property, it won't have very much energy. The second reason is because I actually plan to pull a vacuum on the barrel when testing the max speed. When the barrel is under vacuum, the aerodynamics really don't matter much. And then when it exits the barrel, the shuttle will rapidly lose speed, which again is the design intent. I want it to go fast right as soon as it gets out and then slow down really quickly. At this point, you may be asking yourself, what does it look like to come flying out of this barrel at several hundred miles per hour. And you're in luck. I have designed a custom shuttle to hold my tiny action camera and added a parachute for good measure. My son had no faith in the parachute. What do you guys think is going to happen? I think it's gonna blow up into a million <laughs> pieces and he's gonna waste 300 bucks. Oh, wow. <laughs> you have little faith. <laughs> I don't see how it does anything but perfectly soars through the sky <laughs> at a couple hundred miles an hour and comes to a nice soft landing. Wow. <laughs> it went like four feet. <laughs> it turns out the parachute works way too good and the shuttle actually only goes a few feet. How boring. Let's cut it off and give it a proper launch. You ready? I'm fine. Into the bamboo! Into the ether. It is no longer. I thought for sure we were going to lose that one, but in the end, it actually all worked out great. Though the footage is far too chaotic to be useful. Okay, now it is time to start ramping up the speed. For these tests, I'm shooting into a large old hog feeder because it is the perfect shape to catch the shuttles. And right out of the gate, we're at 752 feet per second or 512 miles per hour. I had a little more fun with some targets, but then I got curious as to what happens if your hand were to get hit with with just supersonic air. For that, I custom designed a converging diverging nozzle in hopes that it would give me really good supersonic flow right at the middle of the hand. <laughs> it 
it was lame and it just blew the hand over because the flow restriction just slowed the release of air so much. So it was time to hit the hand with a Hot Wheel. The first shot wasn't properly captured with my slow motion cameras, but you can see the damage it left. I still wanted slow motion footage of this, so I had to scrounge up the busted remnants for a defeated round two. And this time it was absolutely demolished. It completely blasts a hole through the middle of the hand and pulls all of the bones out of it. You can see fragments of the shuttle raining all over the place too. At this point, we were ready to move on to the big leagues. I had the vacuum pump all set up to give a shot at going supersonic, but first I wanted to see what happens when we take a direct shot to our test dummy. These test dummies are all homemade by the way. We had a major mishap on the first hand mold. Uh, it turned into a pile of garbage real fast. But after buying professional molds, we got where we needed to be. Now for the good part. Surprisingly, it did almost nothing except destroy my GoPro lens, and it tried to scalp them, but even that didn't work. Upon further review, I noticed that the shuttle and Hot Wheel were both demolished exiting the barrel, which means they must have been separated, and the shuttle crashed into the Hot Wheel at several hundred miles per hour. Only small fragments of either actually hit the head. So we set back up, and this time we were not let down. Watch as Hot Wheel shrapnel comes flying out of the head towards the camera. This is what I was expecting to see. There is no way anyone would be walking away from that. Which brings up another reminder, don't try this. I have taken a lot of safety precautions here and my son is either hiding in the truck to stay safe or he's not present at all. And this brings us to our first real supersonic test attempt. For this, I'm running a special barrel with a vacuum hose hooked up and a valve. The end is capped with aluminum foil and sealed with tape. On this first test, it was absolutely screaming. You can see rust clouds flying off of the feeder from the tremendous amount of kinetic energy on impact. And on this first attempt, I wanted to give myself every advantage possible. So I used the world's smallest Hot Wheel. This is a Hot Wheel. It says so on the package. It just happens to be the world's smallest. And I actually had a few of these, so I picked the one with real rolling wheels for authenticity. But when it finally came time to register some new top speeds, I kept getting error messages. I tried several different options and made sure that the light was not impacting the chronograph. And after several attempts, I still couldn't get a reading. My best guess is that several little foil fragments were going through the sensor and just kind of confusing it so it didn't know what speed was happening. So I changed the seal to packing tape and I added in a vacuum gauge. I noticed the foil would occasionally tear before I launched and I would lose vacuum pressure, but I never actually had a way to tell how good the vacuum was on the barrel, so this gauge should solve that problem. I also had to add in a small spacer in the gap where the vacuum gauge is because the shuttle could get hung up in there and that would totally ruin any launch attempt. I used the old clay on a stick trick to measure the gap width since I didn't have anything I could actually stick in the barrel to measure the inside of it. After 3D printing the new spacer and slapping it in place, we are ready to try and break the sound barrier again for the first time. What a letdown. Even while using a tiny Hot Wheel, we never broke out of the 500 foot per second region. Either the packing tape is too strong and slowing the Hot Wheel down upon exit, or our sensor is reading incorrectly because this is even lower than with no vacuum on the barrel at all. The setup and teardown for testing takes quite a bit of effort here. I have to lug around a power source, a compressor, vacuum pump, and a bunch of other stuff. And I have to move all the equipment in the perfect spot so that everything's safe. And now that I complete 
completely need to redesign the barrel. I think we're gonna have to have a part three here where we really push for it. We are not giving up on supersonic, but it's gonna take a rethink and a little bit more time to get us there. Thanks for watching. See you soon.